It's March, another month, another update for Armour 3D. Today we have a bunch of new features, 30 new pull requests and many, many things to talk about. This month gives us a huge improvement on the node groups themselves. I've previously made a video talking about events. This is much better. We have a whole lot to talk about. Until recently, the only way to organize spaghetti nodes inside of Arm 3D, the only way to organize them would be to use a frame or to put them in different node trees and different traits and uh, just spread them around. Well, that will change us now because Arm 3D has a brand new node system that creates different node categories and different node hierarchies, just like the Blender shader node groups. In the logic node editor window, go down to the end panel of the sidebar here, and here you have a brand new function. It says Armory Logic Groups. You click Add Call Group Node, and this adds a brand new node to your scene. Now, this has a multifunction node essentially. It allows you to create new node groups. So let's go ahead and click Create New Node Group. And here you can see up the top we have Node Tree and then our node group. So we've got a small category within our node. A tree right here and this allows you a lot of things essentially you can build out your entire trait your entire logic node group for example this FPS controller is completely built within this node group and then when we press this arrow we can exit out and you can see we have all the different features that we added onto this so essentially everything is running from inside this node group so all of this logic node can be completely compressed into this single node what's more this node group is a multi-purpose node group essentially you can select all the different node groups that are created so you can swap them into whatever you want. What's even more impressive is the fact that we have node tree variables. Now I made a whole video talking about different variables including the tree variables so it's important to know that you can create your own tree variables within these specific subcategories, these small groups inside of the node trees and this is really important because previously tree variables would only apply to specific node trees they wouldn't intermingle within the other node trees so they were specific but this means that you can now use the node trees within these sub modules so you can have multiple node tree variables within the same trait all in all when it comes to uh, suppressing and compressing your node trees to avoid this huge spaghetti mess it's impossible to read these new call groups are amazing not only because you can do a lot with them but the fact that they just compress everything together and it makes working and breathing and understanding your different projects really really easy we have many new nodes for using and controlling arrays. Arrays are really simple to understand once you get the initial concept, so we're going to talk about that more in depth in the dedicated array video coming soon, so subscribe for that. We have four bounties still available up to grabs if you want to earn a bit of money and help out on 3D, then you can go ahead and work your hand at what are these four bounties. High quality bloom has already been made. It's an amazing tool. It looks incredible. So maybe go help out and see if you can work your magic on one of these other four features. We have a bunch of fixes and new nodes applied to this new release. For example, the play action from node has a new feature, the end frame, that allows you to get the end frame property of your animation and use that with other logic nodes. We also have the ability to get all the different assets from around our project, for example, fonts, image textures, uh, uh, sounds and all that type of stuff and you can click this single button that copies it to your bundled folder. Now your bundled folder, like I've mentioned in many videos, is what you need to reference images and assets in Armour 3D. We have an additional vector for move towards function and a new logic node for it, which is really, really amazing. And essentially what this means is that you can move towards any object in your scene without actually knowing where the object is. We also have the get and set camera aspect scale and type nodes, which essentially mean that you can control the entirety of your camera's look and feel uh, using the nodes directly. So this is a really powerful tool, especially if you want to make a game that changes uh, the look and the feel. For example, a 2D then becomes 3D, then a game that encompasses all sorts of different camera types. This is now possible. What's more, we have a new logic node, the get object dimensions node. A great note to figure out the dimensions of your object. And of course, like every month, we have a bunch of fixes and other changes. For example, different artifacts and shadowing things that are no longer an issue now. And obviously, we have many other fixes. For example, real-time post-processing for our new feature, the distort thing that happened last month, now is possible to use at real-time, uh, so you can modify it at runtime, whereas previously, it had a small issue. And other than the general optimization, that is about everything that is new in Arm 3D this month. See you next month for the next monthly update.